G'day, Brett here. I was tagged by an Australian YouTuber, Richard Musgrave Evans, an Outback plein air artist, and challenged to answer two different questions. The first being, what were the three books which inspired me into the outdoors when I was younger, and what is my favorite knife? So I'm going to go a quick look through the three main books I purchased when I was young, which got me into the outdoors and got me excited about heading into the outback. So the first book, I probably purchased this when maybe I was eight or nine, was the SAS Survival Handbook by John Wiseman. So this is probably the earliest book I can remember purchasing regarding going camping and bushwalking and survival. He used to study this for many hours trying to memorize the different knots and and animals and plants and different ways of surviving in the outback or in the bush. So it's a great little book. See, it goes through different essentials, climates and terrain, the food, camp craft, different mapping and navigational skills, as well as health and safety when out camping, hygiene, survival at sea, rescue and preparing for disasters. So this had loads and loads of great content in it. I actually keep a little small compact book as well in my car when I'm traveling so I can take that from doing a longer bushwalk and do find myself in trouble. I still have some of that information because I no longer remember most of it. I don't study survival like I used to. But when I was in my teens, I'd spend a lot of time with my friends taking out my bushcraft knives and making uh, bush, bush string and different fire reflectors and beds and cutting up grass and making thatched roofs and whatever else. But there's all kinds of good information here. You've got your plants, how to skin an animal, carrying it, different types of spears. So it's just a great little book that if you do go out a fair bit traveling, I'd recommend getting something like this. Just to familiarize yourself, you never know, you may actually remember it. I also have something similar on my phone, a app for survival, just in case I do have my phone with me when I'm out bushwalking, I still have some of that information with me before the battery goes flat. It's a great little book. The second book, which wasn't purchased too, much, too long after this, and as some of my longer term subscribers would know, one of my Inspirations is Les Hiddens, The Bush Tucker Man. That's also where some of my film style comes from, as well as Malcolm Douglas. But Les Hiddens was probably the one who inspired me to purchase a Land Rover Defender. I think somewhere back in the late 80s, seeing that defend, seeing his Land Rover Parenti army truck head out into the bush, that just somehow registered in my mind. So when it came to time to purchasing a four-wheel drive, the Land Rover Defender was the only option I could think of. But this brings into Explore Wild Australia with the Bush Tucker Man by Les Hiddens. So this is a really great gem as well for getting background information on various places throughout Australia, as well as a whole heap of survival and bush tucker foods, which again, I've spent many hours studying the maps and just becoming aware of what's out there. So he covers it into different sections of Australia that he's been to, various information about times of year, temperatures, what to expect, background his historical information about some of the first early explorers and what they saw and came across. So with my other books as well, I also carry a smaller condensed version of similar information just so I have options if I do find myself stranded somewhere because of roads are cut off due to rain that I do have some information about bush tucker foods. Here's how to make a, a raft out of a out of paper bark or bark from a tree. And in the middle section there, that was my favorite section. That's where the bush tucker pictures, description, the uses and the maps showing where each of the things shows, even something like shrimp or turtle, various plants. I've come across some of these in my travels and recognize them. It's just great to see. Mangrove snail, you know, if you do get broken down close to a, a coastal region with lots of mangroves and you might not think of eating the snails, but there's loads of bush tucker there ready for you. 
So just keeping that awareness of what's around, as well as some of the, the more dangerous ones as well. I think you might have a few toxic ones around here as well. But that's just another great resource. I used to study these maps when I was younger, trying to think of places I'd go, but obviously that didn't happen until my 30s, because I waited too long to get out and start exploring. So that's another great book. It's, it's a bit outdated now for the maps and other information, but it's a good little resource. After that, I gradually got more and more into a love of wildlife and nature. And that's where I started studying my, my wildlife and identifying my birds. I got massive into bird watching around the age of 18. This is wildlife of Greater Brisbane. That's just like a local resource guide of all the native wildlife within the Brisbane or Greater Brisbane region. And you can see by the book, it's been quite well used over the years. But this just goes through all the really good little things, all the spiders. I loved my spiders because I used to have a fairly big fear of spiders when I was bushwalking. I'd get one, you know, plenty of webs that walk through and I'd have this big golden orb weaver hanging off in front of my hat or something. I'd be like freaking out and throwing my clothes off like crazy. But once I got more educated, I realized a lot of really big spiders and big webs actually aren't very venomous. That Maybe mild local pain, mild to severe local pain, nausea, vomiting, but you're not gonna die. It's not a big issue if you get bitten by one, unless you're one of those really rare cases where you have a, a major reaction because you, you have uh, allergies. But spiders are great. Also it does show some of these bad spiders that if I do get bitten, I know I should <laughs> seek help very quickly. All the different yabbies and stuff. There's still yabbies in some of these bushland reserves throughout Brisbane. So that's great to see that we, we haven't completely poisoned all the, the local waterways. Things like dragonflies, damselflies, they're always interesting. Loads of cicadas. Some of the other wasps. Different native fish in the region. Frogs, that's interesting. So I just memorized these for hours and I got pretty good in my younger days of identifying wildlife. Gradually as I got older, I'd sort of lost that interest, lost the same amount of passion. Snakes are always a really good one. I have a, a smaller snake book in my car, Snakes of Australia, which has almost every snake in Australia with a photo and description and its toxicity. So that if I do find a snake out in the bush and I get bitten, I can at least try and look it up and understand whether I'm, if I've only got a few minutes to live or whether I can get myself out and get some anti-venom. Anti again, yeah, birds. It's just interesting. It gives me something to do too when I'm out in the bush. If I do get bored, there's loads of wildlife to, to start looking at and enjoying. So that was another really good book. After that, my favourite knife. Well, that would be my trusty Swiss Army knife. I got this when I was probably 14 or 15 for my birthday. And I've had it ever, ever since. I've pretty much carried it on every bushwalking trip I've gone and it's almost always in my backpack, just because it is not only a knife, but also a little pouch, which comes with a few extra things which can help me. So the pouch alone has just some maps. I've thrown in some, some water uh, tablets so I can treat water wherever I am. A little signaling mirror, bits of paper and twine, and a uh, little sewing kit on the side has a compass and a ruler, so that's good just for getting a general bearing where I'm going. The other side, a couple of pins, sharpening stone, and a pencil. Those are just useful little things. Then the knife itself, typical Swiss Army knife, loads of stuff, but I used to cut down little trees and stuff with this thing in the bush when I was doing bushcraft. It had a little saw on it, so a little saw trying to cut it, but it, it worked, it did the job. Uh, see, obviously you got the small two knives. Those are nice little things. The file, bit of a saw there too. That's a bit of a fish scaler. Never used it for that. Scissors would always be really useful out in the bush for just cutting fingernails and other little threads and stuff off shirts. Even a little pair of pliers, which surprisingly actually used quite often when you get those really small nuts and bolts on little accessories or, or glasses, I'd use those. 
then your typical screwdrivers and stuff, even a little magnifying glass. I used to use that to start fires and it actually does work. <laughs> if you get a hot day, you get out there and get it just right. Very useful. Other side, this tiny little screw in screwdriver. That was brilliant for the really tiny screws I'd typically have on so my sunglasses coming loose. So yeah, I've had this forever. It's just been a great, great pin, uh, great knife. Even the a little pin it comes with, and that's great for digging out any burrs or, or splinters I had in my fingers. I've used that many times over the years. Never managed to lose it, thankfully. Toothpick, biro, all these little things, uh, tweezers, very useful again. And yeah, so that's just a beautiful knife. That's my favorite knife. And this would be my second favorite knife back in the day. I've only just retired it from service. It accompanied me on most of my trips again. A bit big, it's not really practical for most things, but I'd carry it sometimes for protection when I was walking around up in Cape York, just in case I come across a big pig or something might like to take a chunk out of me, but thankfully that wasn't the case. Has a small little knife, which usually I'd leave this at, at home. It's a bit, a bit useless. It comes out of its pouch too easily. But it's an Italian-made knife I purchased probably back when I was 15. It's more of like a, a hunting military style, so it's not as practical, but this is what I use to, to construct a lot of bushcraft shelters and, and just harvesting grass, blading through the grass, taking chunks, whacking things with it, even trying to use this saw on her back a few times. But this was, yeah, a beautiful knife just for, for typical out in the bush stuff, which I've since replaced with something much more rugged and, and better for bushcrafts. But yeah, many memories from this knife, so I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but I'll keep it, I guess, maybe pass it on in the future. And that's my three books and my favorite knife. So now I'm going to nominate another YouTuber to answer the questions and I'm choosing Warren and Colleen from NQ Explorers. Now Warren and Colleen are treasure and relic hunters. They do a lot of prospecting throughout Australia, mostly Queensland, but they'll head off to sites that have long since been abandoned and lost to history, such as, such as old townships, schools, World War II and World War I campsites. And they'll prospect around and dig up the old coins personal effects, ammunition, anything really, even pottery and some, and some bottles that they find in old dumps. And it's incredibly interesting to see what they find. Some things are beautifully adorned ornaments from necklaces that have a, a mint mark from England. Then they trace back the history of where this, this particular ornament came from. So if you really like Australian history and want to know a bit more about what actually went on in some of these really outback places, check out their channel. So Warren and Colleen, I ask you to answer the two questions. What are your three favorite books that inspired you into the outdoors when you were younger? And what is your favorite knife? So that's it from me and thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Visit my website, roamingtheoutback.com for Australian travel destinations, vehicle preparation ideas and gear reviews. If you'd like to help support the creation of new videos, please consider becoming a Patreon. Click on the Patreon button on the screen now. Thanks.